So we're going to go over the maxillary premolars in this video. And if you'd like, you can in the caption section I have um, a link to where you can download not only these pictures but the notes I, I used to make this video. And I also included a table that's going to give you everything you need to know in a simplified format. So uh, let's get to it. So the maxillary t uh, first premolar, it's typically going to erupt around 11 or 10 to 11 years old, while the maxillary seconds are going to come out around 11 years old. Now if you notice on these, we no longer have a cingulum, instead we have a cusp in the place of the cingulum. So before in the canines, we in the um, and the anterior teeth we had the cingulum. Now what we have is a buccal and lingual cusp. So right here we have our buccal cusp and then this is our lingual cusp. And then this outer part if you can almost imagine it this right here is the buccal cusp bridge of the buccal cusp because it's the ridge going down. And the center area, similar as we've seen before, is the central groove. And this groove going into the mesial marginal ridge, you might have guessed it, is the mesial marginal groove. Now if we imagine this as three-dimensional, this cusp right here is going to be coming out at us like that. And so right along here is where we'd find the lingual cusp ridge of the buccal cusp. And I know that sounds like a mouthful, but this is actually a, a question that comes up on the dental boards. So just be sure to know if you are talking about the premolars, specifically the first premolar, this ridge right here is the lingual cusp ridge, but it's of the buccal cusp. And when you're taking the test, you might think, oh, it's on the buccal cusp, so it should also be the buccal cusp bridge. Now if I remember from before we said that this right here is the buccal cusp bridge. This because it's facing the lingual area it's considered the lingual cusp bridge. Um, and then right up here as we're going along the, the cusp bridge we have the distal cusp. Distal cusp ridge of the buccal cusp. And the same would be applied here. You'd have the mesial cusp ridge of the buccal cusp as well. So let's go into some specifics. We know that there's four developmental lobes and typically for the premolars a trick you can use is the more cusp you see the more lobe is going to be. So, seeing that there's only two cusps, there's only going to be <coughs> four lobes. If there was another cusp, then we would say that there's five lobes. Now let's look at the height of contour. So we have that this is the buccal and this is the uh, lingual. And the reason I know that this is buccal versus lingual, I'm going to kind of skip ahead. The buccal cusp is higher than the lingual cusp on the maxillary premolars, the first premolar. The difference becomes when you're looking at the, the first versus the second premolar. The cusp height is almost the same in the second premolar, while there is a slight difference in the first. So just keep that in mind. So this again is the buccal and this is the lingual. So 
the height of contour for the max first is going to be around the the middle and cervical third while the lingual height of contour is going to be the middle third for the maxillary second on the other hand it's going to be the junction of the cervical middle so it's the junction of the cervical middle for both and as you know we have two cusps the difference is now the location of these cusps the buccal cusp is going to be slightly distal and you can see in this drawing it is slightly distal while the lingual cusp is going to be more mesial. Now in the maxillary second premolar it's going to be mesial that's why the you can almost see a plane of symmetry there. Now the only other thing that I forgot to do was just this. Since I've already labeled the max first let's make, label the max second. We have a central groove right here and if you think about it it's in the center so it has to be a central groove we have a mesial pit and a distal pit and these are just supplemental grooves now a little way to distinguish um, A way to distinguish this is that you're going to see these two pits while you won't really see it I mean you'll see it in this one but there's going to be a difference in the way that the the overall tooth is shaped so if we're looking at the coronal outline the big thing to look for is on your maxillary first premolar the coronal outline looks more hexagonal and then on the the seconds it's going to be more oval and it's not as defined so if you look at this it kind of does look like an oval and this if I I mean it's you can see the angles and almost see that it is a hexagon and then if we look at the cusp themselves the buccal cusp is a lot sharper than the buccal cusp compared to the maxillary seconds so this is more of a sharp buccal cusp well this is a little more blunted and then if we're looking at the the mesial and distal so the cusp ridge on the mesial for the the maxillary first premolar is going to be the longest so this is going to be the longest cusp ridge while when we're looking at the maxillary seconds the distal cusp ridge is going to be the longest and even in the drawings you can almost see it I know this is a little exaggerated but just remember if we're talking about the maxillary first it's the mesial it's the longest cusp ridge the maxillary second it's the distal it's the longest um, and as I said, the cusp height, the maxillary first, you're going to see that the buccal cusp is a lot higher than the distal, while the maxillary seconds, the cusp heights for the buccal and lingual are just about the same height. Now if we look at it, if we're looking at this depression, usually you see a depression on the distal side more so than the, dis, uh, than the mesial side. One of the exceptions that the maxillary first has, it has a great depression on the maxillary first premolars and this is known as the danger zone and the reason it's called the danger zone is whenever you're trying to uh, kind of do any root planning or scaling this area is something to consider. Also if you're doing any um, fillings or restorative work 
you have to be careful of this because it could create problems, um, specifically on a class two, where you're removing this part of tooth structure. You have to consider this mesial uh, depression. Normally, the depression is seen on the distal portion, and and you'll see it more on the um, on the maxillary second. You're going to see a distal depression, but on the maxillary first, it's not going to be nearly as pronounced. Another way to distinguish that you're looking at a maxillary first, typically you're going to see two roots in the maxillary um, first premolar. Also, there's two transverse ridges along here. So we have one here and then one here. Oh, sorry, triangular ridges. And that's going to lead to a transverse ridge. Um, now, if we're going to look at the crown shape from a proximal view, meaning the distal or the mesial, we're going to see that it's more of a trapezoid shape. And that's going to be the same thing that we see in the maxillary second premolars. The only difference is because these cusp heights are the same, the maxillary second premolar is symmetric, while the maxillary first is not. Now, if we look at the contacts, so the contacts for the mesial, so I'm going to write it right here, the mesial contact uh, is going to be at the, it's going to be near the junction of the buckle and middle third. While on the distal, it's going to be in the middle third. And the maxillary seconds is a little bit easier. Both contacts are on the middle third. So you don't have as much to memorize for the maxillary seconds. Um, typical thing that you're not going to see in your maxillary uh, teeth is a distal tilt. Just remember your mandibular teeth are going to typically have a distal tilt. So as we said about the grooves, we have our central groove right here our mesial marginal ridge groove right here. We also have a mesial buckle um, groove. And then we have a distal buckle groove. So this is our mesial buckle groove and this is our distal buckle groove. Just keep in mind that there are these um, you know, five grooves. So distal buckle is around the distal side, central groove, mesial buckle groove and the one that's hard to remember is the mesial marginal groove um, sorry yeah mesial marginal ridge groove that's the one that usually students forget um, in the second premolars you're not going to have a common uh, you're not going to really see the mesial marginal ridge groove but you will see the central groove if you notice the difference is the central groove is smaller than on the maxillary first. Now the CEJ on the maxillary seconds are fairly flat while on the mesial of the maxillary first the central groove, or sorry not central groove, the CEJ on maxillary first for the distal as well as the mesial they're going to be convex towards occlusal. But now if we're looking at the facial lingual, they're going to be concave. As we know that there's two roots, so typically you're going to see a buccal and lingual root. You're going to typically see two canals in the maxillary first. Now the interesting thing is in the maxillary second, you're going to see one canal um, oh, sorry, I, I said that wrong. You're going to see one root, but occasionally you will see two canals. You will see occasionally two roots. So this one is kind of a unique tooth. Um, what makes this really unique is that the root is 1.8 times longer than the crown. And this is a really big deal that it has a really long root. Um, 
the function of the maxillary second premolar is really for grinding. And the only other thing that's important in um, this section is the idea for occlusion, the stamp versus the shear cusp. The stamp cusp is seen as the functional cusp, while the shear cusp is the non-functional. So if we think about, if you, if you were to close your mouth right now and have your teeth line up, the cusp, so in the maxillary, our lingual cusp, is going to lay inside the occlusal surface of the mandibular premolars. So this would be our functional cusp, being the stamp cusp. The shear cusp is going to be floating outside, so it's going to be seen as the non-functional cusp. And as you probably guessed it, it's the exact opposite for the mandibular uh, premolars. Well, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like uh, the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.